Hi everybody, Mary Lou from Aloha Canine Training. Today I'm doing a video on prong collars. Prong collars are my absolute favorite training tool. I've used plenty of uh, items, I've used plenty of training collars, I've tried training without collars, I've used gentle leaders, uh, tried numerous things, right? Just wanted to see what was out there uh, when I first started training. And I have to say, prong collars wins hands down, okay? so. Now in the wrong hands or in an uneducated person's hands, these can definitely uh, be used improperly. Um, but if used properly, they should never harm or injure your dog, okay? So there's a lot of people out there that are gonna say, uh, you know, it's punishment-based training and it's really not. I've been using these on my personal dogs for 18 years and my dogs have never been injured, never tried to run away, never been mad at me. They absolutely love their training collars. So when I pick one up and they hear this jingle, they go crazy because they know it means that they're doing something fun. Okay. I use it for working. I use it for, uh, you know, when I take them for walks, anytime they leave the house, they're on a training collar and they love them. Okay. So let's get into it. All right. This is a prong collar. This is a small size, small training collar. Okay. It also comes in an extra small collar. Tiny little bracelet size, okay. And then we've got the medium. So this is the one that most average dogs are gonna be wearing, okay. You don't need anything bigger than a medium. Medium is a 3.0 millimeter or a 22 inch. And if your dog is 150 pounds, you can even just add links okay you never need to go any bigger than a medium because the, the large and the extra large are really hard to open all right now we're going to talk about a couple different collars and then i'll get back to the prong collar so when i went to school for dog training uh the collars that we were trained on was a choke chain okay so i grew up with these every dog in our house had one of these we probably had you know 15 or 20 of these laying around our house at any given time this is what uh when my mom would take dogs to obedience training when i was a kid this is what they were trained on now these were never made to be a training collar okay uh, these were actually made for uh, dogs in a show ring so that you could have it on your dog and hold their head up okay so their head would be up and their body would be um, you know, show nicely on display their coat and it wouldn't detract from their coat. Okay. So this is what this is for. All right. Along the line, somebody decided that maybe it would be a good idea to try for training. And I mean, it works. Okay. I'm not going to say it doesn't, like I said, this is what, uh, I was using when I went to dog training school and, uh, you know, got results. Okay. But since then I found better. So this is how I, uh, check or sorry, a check choke chain works. Okay, when you want to put it on your dog, okay, if my dog is facing me, it should be in an upside down P as I put it on. Okay, and that way, if this is my dog's head coming through, when I put this on my dog, I pop and it's going to release. Okay, so you want this flat part to be at the top of the dog going over the dog's head and the part that hangs going under the chin, okay? Loosen, pop, loosen. Now, I can do this all day. If you can see this here, okay? I'm popping and loosening, popping, loosening, popping, loosening, okay? Really doesn't hurt, doesn't bother me, but where it is bothering me is right here, where this O-ring is connecting with this chain, if you can see that, okay? So if I popped all day, I'd probably end up with a little mark there, but really not feeling too much around the rest of the circumference of my arm. All right. Now, if we put this on wrong, okay, so the flat part is more at the bottom, okay, then pop, doesn't release. Okay, try that again, pop, doesn't release. This is like a noose around my my dog's neck okay so we want to make sure that we're uh if we are using these that you're putting them on right okay because sadly when you go buy this in the store it just comes like this there's no instructions with this so most people don't know that there's a right and a wrong way for it to work and if it's on wrong you're choking your dog and that's why they call it a choke chain because dogs literally sit there and pull and gag and choke right trying to get through it 
All right. So we want to make sure that we're doing right by our dog, obviously. Okay. We get these dogs. We love them. They're part of our family. So we don't want to injure them. These can cause injury. Okay. These can cause permanent uh, nerve damage. They rub up and down the neck. They're going to rub around the neck. Uh, in order for this to get on your dog, this has to be huge to go over your dog's head, okay? But now all training collars should fit snug up high behind the ears. Well, your dog's head is bigger than its neck. So when this goes over your dog's big head, it's now going to be way too big on the neck. So you're constantly going to be pulling it up, pulling it up, pulling it up in order for it to work properly. And it's just not going to be as effective, okay? So... If you have one of these, I really do encourage you to throw it away or use it as a weapon when you're on a walk to protect yourself from loose or stray dogs, okay? That's something I talk about my orientation. So uh, the other training collar that I do like uh, is called a martingale or a check choke. So this would be a martingale or a check choke, okay? Now a true martingale is actually gonna have, uh, it's a nylon here, it's adjustable nylon, and then it would have this cinching mechanism part here it would actually be this same nylon material. And it would have that cinching ability, but it's not as quick and there's no noise factor. So a lot of times this noise factor is enough to clue your dog in that there's a consequence coming. Now that's all these training collars are going to do. They're going to give your dog a consequence, okay? A correction, a leash correction. It's a quick pop and a release, okay? So... It's not punishment, all right? Dogs learn through consequence. That's how they interact with other dogs. They uh, they do, um, you know, if a dog does something that bothers another dog, it's gonna come and bite that dog on the neck. It's gonna give it a consequence. And so dogs learn through consequence. So my style of training is consequence and reward. So we use the training collar to teach them what it is that we want and to do it in a timely manner. We use treats in order to get the dog to be motivated. And then we also use toys to make it a real motivator and make it really fun for the dog. So it's a balanced method, okay? There's a lot of positive motivational trainers out there. And sadly, the more clients that I'm seeing that have tried other trainers, um, unfortunately, their methods just aren't that positive to me. And it's really quite sad, but I'm not gonna get into that, okay? So there's a million ways to train dogs, all right? Find what works best for you, but I found that this is the quickest, easiest method. This gets through to your dog uh, quickly and your dog understands what it is and what it isn't supposed to do. And that's what we want. That is fair. That is balanced. That is that is what training is all about, right? Making it easy for your dog to understand and for your dog to want to work for you. So the prong collar, going back to that, oh, sorry. Uh, this one I would use on puppies, easygoing dogs. Uh, senior dogs, dogs that have been trained maybe on the prong and now they don't need it. Okay, you can go back to this style of collar. Um, that's what I would uh, use this for. Okay, a lot of times we'll start puppies on these and then after a few weeks, the owners are like, you know what, I don't think that my dog's responding to this anymore. So can we try the other collar? We put them on the collar and then it's a night and day difference once they're on the prong collar. So the prong collar, let me show you this guy. Okay, my little tiny one here. Now the prong collar and any training collar really needs to be, like I said before, fitted up high under the chin behind the dog's ears, okay? So now if this was on my dog and it was this loose, I could pull this up, okay? If this was my dog's neck here, and if I could pull this up, it's gonna not be effective. See, when I pop it, it doesn't connect all the way, okay? So a lot of times you're gonna see dogs wearing these, but they're wearing them down low, okay, on the neck, and that's not going to be effective, okay? So you're going to have some results, but it's not going to be as effective as it could be. And these tools are amazing. The reason I love these is you don't have to be stronger than your dog. You don't have to muscle your dog. You don't have to just hammer them on the leash. I've seen plenty of people walking dogs just on flat collars, and they're trying to correct their dog, and you can't get a correction. And then their dog is literally choking. They're getting more mad and frustrated, which means now they're correcting their dog even harder, and nothing is being learned, okay? The dog doesn't understand and the people get more frustrated, okay? And that's, it's so sad. I even caught myself yelling at somebody out my window one day when I saw him just nailing his dog. And I was just like, oh, that poor, poor puppy, okay? He, he didn't know what was going on. So go back to this. If these are put on properly, they're going to be effective. So if I have it here, it's too loose. It's not going to make that connection. But if I make it snugger, okay, so imagine I've taken a couple links out. Okay, and this is my dog's neck again. This is just for time saving. Okay, now when I pull up, I barely have 
any room under there. This is still a little too loose. I would actually probably take one of these out. But ideally what we're looking for is that you can get two fingers under that collar, okay? And that's it. And you can't pull and see through there, okay? You should just be able to get two fingers. So now that way, when you go to pop it, okay, it's coming together and it's gonna give little pinches. So again, when dogs correct other dogs, they bite them on the neck, right? So this emulates a dog's teeth and this is something that your dog understands, okay? We're speaking the dog's language with this collar, okay? There's nothing that speaks dog with pulling on a flat collar. There's nothing that speaks to the dog pulling them on a harness, okay? Those um, walking harnesses, okay, they're great for dogs to not pull on the leash, but are they? Because harnesses are made for pulling. That's why sled dogs wear them, okay? And a lot of those uh, walking harnesses actually pinch and chafe and irritate the dog, okay? That's why they stop pulling. But most dogs will just pull harder to stop that irritation, all right? So, but those harnesses aren't conducive for training. If you have a dog that's reactive and aggressive, you still have no control over your dog, okay? You can't make him sit and obey you when it's freaking out when it's on a harness, okay? With a prong collar, you've got all the control you can need, all right? Now I have used the gentle leader, okay? This is the one that goes around the dog's face. A lot of people use these. Now here's the thing I found about the gentle leader. It's not gentle at all. Okay, all I, I put this on my German Shepherd when he was a puppy and all he did was pull, okay, toss his head up like a horse and in three minutes he had a gash across the bridge of his nose and he had a permanent scar from this. Three minutes from wearing this, okay? I had absolute zero control. I had zero focus from him. All he wanted to do was get it off his face. Okay, so he was clawing at it. He was laying on the ground. He was freaking out. He hated it, hated this on his face, okay? So literally I bought this, I paid 30 bucks 18 years ago, put it on my dog for three minutes, I took it off, it went back in the box and it's been there ever since, okay? That's why 18 years I still have this box. It's never come back out, except for to show people, <laughs> okay? Um, so going back to my prong collar, these can be sized, individual links on here that come off, okay? This is probably not the best one to show you, but I've got, an option to size it. I can add links, I can remove links as I need to, all right? Now, you will see, uh, you know, pictures on the internet where there's dogs with the uh, holes, okay? You've got two holes all the way around the neck, okay? And then you know, yes, that was from the prong collar, but guess what? It was not the prong collar's fault. It was the bad owner's fault, okay? That just meant that some owner put this collar on a dog and never took it off, okay? It was probably a young dog, a puppy, and the collar grew into it, all right? And it was too tight and was never able to move. Again, we don't want it so st snug that we can't move it. We just wanna be able to get two fingers under there. And having those two fingers under there means it's gonna be able to rotate. So it should never just sit and embed into your dog's throat, okay? And that's the other thing. These collars are meant to sit on the surface of the neck, all right? And when they're corrected, they just fold together, do that little bite, and give pinches around the skin, okay? That's it, a little pinch, a little bite. Again, communicating to your dog in a language it understands, a bite on the neck, all right? So it should never uh, pull, right, and cause any kind of damage to the trachea, all right? Because it's folding and pinching. Okay, and when your dog pulls, it's actually going to correct itself. It's not, it's gonna understand what that bite means, okay? It means to stop what it's doing. It will stop, all right? And there isn't gonna be any kind of damage here, okay? So the check choke, or sorry, the choke chain, okay? This one will, right? Like I said, dogs will pull, 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 and they're gonna cause damage, okay? And they're just pulling because they don't respect this, they don't understand it, and they're just trying to find a way through it, okay? Just when they understand, they stop what they're doing immediately, all right? So we don't have to, again, be tough or muscle our dogs. We don't have to correct them too firmly. This is our volume control. Our voice gets to stay the same. So if I'm walking my dog and I need it to stop doing something, maybe it's barking or staring at another dog, uh-uh, leave it, uh-uh, leave it, uh-uh, leave it, uh-uh, leave it. I'll just get a little firmer each time with my correction. My voice stays the same, okay? So this is volume, all right? 
So it makes your training a lot easier and a lot quicker, okay? So as far as sizing these collars, again, just take out the links, all right? This is a new collar. Now, this is the kind of collar I want you to invest in, okay? This is called a Herm Springer, okay? S-P-R-E-N-G-E-R. -E you can get these online. I carry this kind. Uh, I have mediums right now. I'm getting more smalls in. Uh, and this is a um, steel chrome plated collar. Now they also make them in stainless steel. They make them in black. They make them in a copper. They make them in a brass. Uh, some dogs have nickel allergies so or metal allergies. So you can get these other varieties. Um, they are more expensive. And uh, they're beautiful though. I mean, if you put a black one on a black dog or a copper one on a black dog, they're gorgeous. So um, they're out there, you can get them, just make sure it's a Herm Springer, okay? There is a cheap made in China version. And here is why I want you to get the Herm Springer. Okay, these guys are the original, right? It's from Germany. These guys have been training working dogs for years. These are rounded edges. So if I rub this on my hand, nothing, no mark. Okay, the other ones uh, that you can get at like PetSmart, they're just chopped off, okay? Yes, they're cheaper, which you know, get what you pay for, right? So these ends are just uh, chopped off and they're blunt and they're sharp. So if you were to rub it on your skin like that, you're gonna actually end up with like scratches, okay? That's what it's gonna feel like. So it's gonna be constantly scratching your dog's neck. Now they do make these little black rubber tips that you put on here, okay? Kind of like those little tips you would put on the cat claws, okay? It's the same kind of thing, but these this metal is sharp and it just cuts through. Kind of like when your toes go through your socks because your toenails are too long, right? So kind of the same thing. But in my opinion, why do I have to buy this uh, secondary item for this prong collar when they should have taken the first, you know, taken the right steps in the first place and rounded the tips off, okay? They are a little bit better now, but um, I still would never trust that cheap made in China version, okay? They bend, the metal is really cheap. So no offense, China, but Germany did it better this time. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the other thing with uh, the cheaper version of these, okay, the knockoff, we'll call them, um, this metal plate here. Okay, you see that? So the metal plate on the Herm Springer collar is going to look like that. Okay, it's steel. So it's going to be a little bit stronger. This one, and yes, this is not a Herm Springer. Herm Springer doesn't make these micro mini ones. Um, but this is the, the plate I kind of want to show you. Okay, so in a small and then in a medium, these are uh, really big uh, on the collar. And what that means is it's taking up space where there could be more prongs. And the more teeth you have, right, the more bite you have, the more effective it's going to be. There's actually a lot of trainers that will buy these micro mini and just add the links, right? They'll buy a bunch of them, put them all together, and then have one really long collar to go around, you know, a 60, 80 pound dog. You can absolutely do that. They do that because they want more bite, more teeth. I find the medium works just as effective. I don't need to have all the tiny teeth, but you absolutely could do that. Um, now, as far as uh, sizing these goes, again, this one's got the metal plate in the middle now, okay? They've updated this version a couple years ago. Okay, I have, this is my original collar from my German Shepherd 18 years ago. And if you, I mean, I this thing has been on him every day for the 12 years of his life, okay? It's still in great shape, all right? Over time, sometimes these links can bend, but uh, you can just replace that link real easy, okay? So if you notice, this collar is all the prongs go in one direction, okay? In this version, the prongs are going in two directions, okay? So these ones are going down, there's our chain, and then they're going up. Okay, so what that means, I'm just gonna show you on the smaller, the small version here. Okay, so what that means is when I put this on my dog, okay, I bring it around, connect that, okay, it's gonna be, those, those teeth go two different ways, so it's just gonna be a little bit more effective in that bite, okay? Who knew that they could improve something that was already awesome? But they did. OK, 
okay? So it just allows it to give it a better grip, a better bite, all right? So <clears throat> when you're sizing or when you're using it, you've got this metal plate in the middle, okay, if you get a new one. You wanna make sure that your chain is nice and straight. There's two rings on here. One is this O-ring and one is this D-ring, okay? A D-ring because it's shaped like the letter D. All right, so the D-ring is the one we want our leash to be on. This O-ring, all it is doing is keeping these two links of chain together, okay? That's its only purpose. So I would make sure that it's sized properly, okay? I'm gonna hang it straight, make sure my chain isn't twisted. If you go to put this on and your dog is maybe moving and you drop it, right? And then you grab it again, but it got a little twist in it when you go to put it on, what's gonna happen is your correction isn't gonna be as effective, okay? It's just not gonna loosen after, okay? So you might be like, hmm, if, you know, I don't feel like it's quite working right, that's the first thing you need to check is the chain, okay? And if that's the case, you just redo it, make sure it's nice and straight, goes on straight, okay? and up under the chin. So again, up high right here, right up behind the ears, and we want it to fit snug, okay? So I'm just gonna stick this in, okay? So you squeeze, okay, I'll show you real quick. I just use my thumb and my forefinger, and you can squeeze, okay? So I stick that in here, give it a squeeze, and there you go, okay? Now the cool thing with this tab here this is, this is great if you're left-handed or right-handed or whichever way you find it easier to manipulate. Now, when I want to take the collar off, all I'm gonna do is put my thumb here, okay? And then I'm gonna wiggle up and out with the prompt, okay? So I'm gonna push down this way with my thumb, wiggle up and out, okay? The smalls are quite easy. The mediums are gonna be a little bit harder. So you wanna just make sure that when you get one, you practice with it in the beginning, okay? Have us sit on your couch, watch some Netflix, and practice. Now, when you, where's my video here? <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, when you're, when you're looking at this, okay, these holes here, the prongs are quite a bit wider. Okay, so this is the medium. Again, it's gonna be a little bit more stiff, so it's a little harder to get in there. So again, I'm gonna stick the, the one end of the prong in one of those holes, squeeze, use it as leverage and squeeze it. So you can see that was a little bit tough, okay? The mediums are a little harder. So honestly, I like to open them and, and put, them, um, put them together in these loops, okay? In the actual links themselves. There's nothing wrong with that, but again, over time, these can just kind of bend. Uh, so maybe it's squeezed too tight, you can use pliers, but again, if you have extra links, okay? just replace that link. So all you're gonna do is stick that in there, squeeze, and it's so much easier because these don't have as much uh, distance as that, the little holes in this tab, okay? Much easier, and I've, I've been using these for 18 years, so uh, I'm pretty schooled at them, but they are awkward in the beginning, okay? So get used to it because you don't wanna be messing around and fumbling with it, fumbling with it while you're trying to get it on your dog and they're like, what's happening? And sometimes it's too tight and they're getting frustrated and you're getting frustrated. So get used to it, play with it, play with it, play with it, get used to it. So when you do go to put it on your dog, you've got it down, okay? Now for people who have a hard time with that, all right, I've made a quick release, okay? So I've been making this for quite a few years. I had a little grandma one time that needed this collar for her dog and she, couldn't, um, couldn't, her, her fingers weren't strong enough, okay, to open it. So I found a way to adjust it and I added this, a quick release, okay? So I just took that plate out and I just added this right now. So now I carry these, okay, so that I can make these quick releases for my clients as well, okay? Some people have kids that their hands aren't strong enough. Uh, again, a little grandma, grandpa, or, you know, maybe you've got arthritis, doesn't matter what the reason, maybe you just don't like doing the other way, you want the quick release, okay? So all I do is I also add a little zip tie in there, all right? And I bought this little quick release kit. I sell these for $10 to my clients, okay? So 
um, and I'll just usually adjust their collars for them. Now, I also had a client uh, whose son took her dog for a walk, and when he came home, he took the leash off, but he hadn't taken the prong collar off yet, and their dog got zoomies. Did some hot laps around the living room. His kennel, his crate was still open, and it was a black wire metal crate, and when he ran in, uh, rubbing against it, his prong ended up getting caught in the metal wire, okay? So the dog got stuck, he was panicking for a little bit, um, you know, her son ran in, grabbed the collar, was able to get it off. Thank goodness he's a tough kid. Okay. They were both a little shaken up and panicked, but nobody was injured. Okay. It wasn't a big deal, but I went there. She called me and told me what happened. So that night I went there and I did the, the quick release on it. Um, it bent a couple prongs, but I was able to fix her, her collar. So, uh, now, right. If worst case that was to happen again, of course, now they know to make sure that the kennel door is shut. Uh, and that prong collar comes off before you get zoomies. Okay. Uh, scary lessons sometimes, but, um, so now, right, this can be on and off. Okay. And it's metal. It's not plastic, so it's not going to break. All right. It's nice and durable. Okay. So if you need something like that, let me know. I can definitely, uh, get a quick, uh, quick release kit to you. Okay. Um, now as far as, um, here just gonna go back to the other the other one now as far as these individual links okay again that's how we're gonna size it so if I need to size this for my dog I'm gonna take out a couple links here okay most of my dogs use eight links there's gonna be ten on your prong collar now when you buy this in the store if you buy one in the store count the links okay because I've definitely been in stores um, I was there recently there was a small and I was going to buy it for a client, but there's only eight links on it. It was the last one they had. So, uh, they had gone to the store later and I said, make sure, you know, you count the links cause they only had the one with the eight. Sure enough, that one was the only one there still. Uh, and the person at the store tried to sell it and tried to tell them that it was fine, but they needed the 10 links. Their dog was a little bit bigger. So, um, and I'm like, why are you going to pay for something? you know, when you don't have all the parts. Okay. And they wouldn't give a discount because they didn't believe them. Now here's the other sad thing with these collars. Okay. Nobody that sells these in the stores knows a freaking thing about them. You guys, it's so crazy. It's so sad. So I've gone into, you know, most pet stores I've gone into, I've asked, I played dumb and I've asked people, how do these work? Okay. And the people working there cannot tell me they don't know. Okay. So they're going to tell you it's too big. Uh, first time I walked in and what the pet store that I go to here, with my lab when I first moved to the city, uh, the girl at the counter, the second I walked in, she's like, oh, ma'am, your, your collar's too tight. She's like, here, here's some links. So she handed me four links and I was like, oh, gee, thank you. I'll put these on later. Okay. Went about my business and I took the links because a pack of three links is like 10, 12 bucks. Okay. So I was like, thank you. Thank you for the $12 and links that you just gave me. I will happily take those. Okay. I did not put them on my collar because my collar was fitted properly. Okay. Again, the people that sell these don't know how they work. All right. So, um, you want to make sure that, uh, you know what you're doing, which is why I'm doing this video. All right. So when I'm sizing this, I'm going to remove a couple links because this is the center, uh, has that center one. I want to try and make sure that the links are even on each side. Okay. So again, these come off really easy. It's great. Okay. Now I've got spare links. I can make sure that this is sized properly on my dog. I'm good to go. Now, again, removable links, beautiful thing. Makes it easy to size that collar, but it can be dangerous, okay? So because they're removable, right? If you do not put it in right, right? If I put one in here and in there, okay? My dog is wiggling. It feels like it went in. All that happens is he shakes his head and it just opens up, okay? Now my dog is running down the street. Oh my God. So we decided when I worked in California, the trainer that uh, I worked with, my mentor, Caroline Haldeman, uh, she had decided we worked with a lot of aggressive dogs and we were like, you know what? We need a safety. So she came up with the idea of a safety coupler. She's like, we need something that attaches from, you know, the collar to, um, to the flat collar, right? So it connects. So I came up with this safety coupler. All right. So it's a cable and it's got two, uh, little snap hooks on it. All right. This is, uh, that airplane cable, or airline cable or whatever it's called. Um, it's a coated cable and we can make these in any size. So 
I can't even tell you how many hundreds of these that we made and how this would work. All right. Is it's going to go onto your leash. Okay. This is my leash it goes onto the leash. And then this goes onto my training collar. Okay. So training collar, the leash is on the D ring. My safety coupler is attached to my leash. All right. This, is attached to my dog's flat collar. Their regular collar they're gonna wear with their tag, okay? So I don't have a flat collar up here with me, but imagine that this was my dog's flat collar, okay? So it's a backup, all right? So I'm connecting. Now, originally, again, we had these going to the training collar, but then I had an incident where my leash gave, all right? The little spring, right? And these little snap hooks over time, they can they can just loosen, they get rusty, whatever. And then they just stay open. Okay. So I had a dog walking down the street. I was walking him, shook his head. This just popped off. He was on a uh, check joke. Okay. He was on one of these. So I didn't have the safety on because we were only using them in the beginning for the prong collars. And then we just, I just realized, you know what, this has to be for every dog. No dog leaves the house without it. Okay. So luckily that dog didn't even notice. He was healing really nice. And I just put that leash back on him, turned around, went home and put the safety coupler on and never looked back. Every dog that leaves my house is attached to a safety. Okay. Everything can happen. Now they even work with these gentle leaders, if that's your thing. Okay. Um, and uh, it'll work with a leash and harness, just whatever you want, okay, whatever your situation, but it's just a good idea to have this backup. So originally they were made out of this cable. Then I found the biothane that uh, I make leashes out of. I love this material. So then I start making them out of this biothane, okay? So this material I have in blue, red, black, and orange, all right? And again, I can make them any size. And what was happening uh, was people were, buying two or three, right? They'd come back and buy two or three of these because they would lose them, right? Their, uh, their kid took it off their leash or, right? They just took it off their leash and put it somewhere. Uh, I mean, honestly, this should never come off your leash. There's no reason for it not to be on your leash because if you're going out with your dog, your dog should have a training collar on, right? It's going to have the leash on. It should have the safety coupler. Okay. And I don't even care if you're just going from your front door into your car, right? On the driveway. Okay. Things can happen. Trust me. So this is a leash I invented with the biothane. All right. And it's got the safety coupler attached. All right. So now we can't lose this. It's always there. All right. Now this is again, that biothane material. I love this material. It's like, uh, it's like leather. It's really soft but it doesn't ever get stiff with like leather does. When leather gets wet, it kind of gets crusty and stiff. Um, you can't clean leather if your dog pees on it. There's no way to really clean it. Same with the nylon. Okay, you can wash it, but it's getting woven uh, into the weaves of that nylon. So this is uh, amazing, okay? You can just, you can drag this in the mud, you can freeze it, and it'll wash up and look exactly like this again, okay? And then uh, I do have the other snap hooks, but when I can, I try and do these trigger snaps because I just find that they're a little bit more safe, a little more durable. But again, if this failed, you're still backed up. Okay. So if you need a leash, um, you want one of these safety leashes. Again, this is my design. Uh, I've been making these for about 12 years. They're $30 for my clients. They're going to be going on Etsy soon and they will be more than that. But for my clients right now to make them affordable um, and because I believe in safety, uh, I want all my clients' dogs to be safe. So uh, I provide those for $30 right now. Okay. And the safety couplers are 10, no matter what material you get. So um, that is uh, super important, you guys, is having some kind of safety device uh, to back up your leash. Because I can tell you hundreds of stories. Okay. <laughs> like too many stories. So um, think, you know, think your dog's safety. Okay. So now, as far as having puppies, okay, or your dog wearing these in the house, again, a training collar should only be left on your dog when they're supervised, okay? So going back to what I was saying about those pictures of dogs that have holes embedded in their neck, okay, that dog clearly was not wearing that only while supervised and it was left on the dog far too long. You can literally have this collar on your dog 24 seven if you are there, okay? So if you have a puppy and you're trying to teach it the ropes in your house, by all means, okay? Put this training collar on 
and you can have a little tab on there. So a tab is just gonna be a little handle, okay? So this is just a leash that a dog's chewed at one point, okay? And you could have that, right? Go to the dollar store, buy a cheap leash, or I can make tabs. I make little loop tabs out of this same material so puppies can't chew them, okay? So now, so I've got both links there. So I can pop and release, right? My dog goes to jump up on the counter. Ah, ah, leave it, right? I've got a way to correct it. So puppies need to be, um, you know, taught the rules, right? So the only way to do that is to be able to reinforce those rules and teach them what's wrong and what's right, okay? So you can literally have your puppy in the crate the second they come out, this goes on, okay, before they even step out of the crate and you've got a tab or a leash on there so you can control your puppy, okay? Or even a, a, a dog that you get from a rescue, maybe it's even a year or two old, not a puppy, that's okay. So what we can do is make sure that, um, you know, you've got a way to control your dog. Now, if, when my dog goes back in that crate, I'm gonna take this off, okay, set it on the crate or set it next to the crate, but my dog's not gonna wear this in the crate because that, my dog is in the crate, I'm not supervising him, that's why he's in the crate. So this is not going to be on him. All right. But as long as I'm with him, he can have it on. If he's going to be in the backyard for any length of time, I will take it off. Okay. Just so he can't get caught up on anything. Again, if he did, he could probably twist out of it. Okay. Get himself out. But with this one, okay. Some people just leave these on their dogs all the time. You guys, this is a noose, right? So if your dog jumped over a fence and got caught, he's dead literally dead okay he will be strangled and i'm i'm sure there's thousands and thousands of dogs that have died wearing these okay this one same thing but it's not going to be as tight it doesn't create that same noose it's just going to be this tight around the neck but your pro dog probably wouldn't strangle itself maybe if it was twisting and thrashing around okay sorry you guys ugly scary thought but um i hope you don't <laughs> you know, get mad at me for that visual. Um, but it's, it's the truth. Okay. So training collar should never be left on your dog. Okay. Only when they're supervised. So only use it during training and only use it. And I mean, life, right. Living with your puppy. Okay. Is training. So every moment you're with your puppy, you are training them. So they should have something on that you can correct them. They go to bite your feet. Ah, uh ah, -uh, leave it. Okay. They go to grab your shoe. Ah, uh ah, -uh, leave it. Right. Anything you want, you can fix in seconds. So what's funny is um, a lot of, again, the motivational trainers, and I'm not trying to trash anyone. I just want to explain the difference here. Okay. So some motivational trainers, you know, they're going to be against these. Okay. And um, you guys, you're going to get slack. Okay. If your dog is wearing this, you will guarantee somebody's going to be like, you shouldn't have that on your dog or say something to you about it, whatever. Okay. Just ignore it. I always do. They don't know me. They don't know that I'm a trainer. They don't know anything about my dog or the reason maybe I have this. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's my dog. It's my responsibility. Okay. So I just, I don't get into it with people. All right. But these same motivational trainers, okay. Um, they think that this is a punishment, but here's what I find kind of fascinating. Recently, a client told me that um, they were doing a class with somebody and Someone had asked, how do you keep your dog from jumping on the counter, right? And stealing your sandwich or whatever, right? They're jumping up on the kitchen counter, putting their paws up there, stealing food. And their method was to kick your dog's legs out from underneath them. I got tears in my eyes. I was mortified because to me, that's not teaching your dog anything other than to fear its owner. Okay, you're putting fear in that. And that is not what this training, this tool is about. Okay, this is about respect, not about fear. Okay, so if I'm kicking my dog's legs out from underneath it to try and teach it not to jump on the counter, it's not going to learn not to jump on the counter. It's learning that when I'm around, I might kick it and injure it. Okay, and that's just it. Your dog could fall. It could fall awkwardly and it could shatter a hip. Okay, it could hurt itself, right? It could do some damage to ligaments. And it's not going to want to be next to me. Now try and get that dog to heal and uh, want to walk next to me or do training next to me when all it's thinking is that foot might hurt me again. Okay. So nothing positive and motivational about that. Okay. What you can do with this, again, like I said, have your little tab training collar on and your dog pops up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, leave it. Okay. Do it again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, leave it. Do it again. Your dog goes, yeah, okay, no. 
It's not going to jump up there. Okay. So in three little, two, three little corrections, your dog understands not to put his feet up on the counter. Okay. No fear is involved. It's like, yeah, cool. I'm just going to sit here. Now you can offer that treat and your dog learned. I don't put my feet on the counter because when I do that annoying thing happens and you guys literally, this is just annoying your dog. Okay. Uh, your dog's pain tolerance is 10 times higher than ours. And these don't hurt, okay? You put this on yourself. I've done it. I put it on my leg, put it on my arm, pop away. It doesn't hurt, okay? It doesn't hurt at all, all right? It's just going to come together and give little pinches. And again, you can see it on here, okay? It's not quite tight enough, but you can see, right, kind of how it comes together at a pinch. But a dog's skin is going to be a lot looser than mine. Now, the only time that this should cause any irritation or damage, okay, that I, and I've seen this, is, uh, for example, a dog like a boxer. They have really thin, thin fur here, okay? They have thin fur all over their body, but right here, it's very thin. And this part of the neck, um, that skin is almost like um, our armpit skin, okay? It's, it's a little thin, it's a little fragile. So when we're training and we're using this collar a lot in the beginning, sometimes that dog's neck can just get irritated just from this, the metal just rubbing, okay? So it might be a little red, it might look a little scratch, but it's not um, not going to hurt your dog. It's going to hurt you more because you think you're hurting your dog, but I promise you, you're not. Okay. They don't even notice. They don't care. Now, if that is an issue, um, I've had people, um, they sew these little silk neck covers. They're called neck protectors. Okay. So if you can sew, sew it out of, uh, it's like a little, just making a little turtleneck. Okay. Um, she's going to slide over your dog's head and sit here. And it's a silky material, so the collar will slide nice, okay? If you need a cheaper version or you don't sew, then just go ahead and cut your t-shirt sleeve off, okay? Just right here, boop, cut it off. And you've got yourself um, a little turtleneck that you can put over your dog's neck and can protect it. Over time, it's just going to get used to it and you won't need to use it anymore, but those are some tools that you can use to definitely help. Now, another thing, if... Uh, like I said, people are going to give you flack, right? So if you don't like that and you don't want to deal with it, they make these uh, little uh, covers, okay? It's a prong cover. So it's a material just like this, a little nylon material, okay? And what happens is you can just put it over top of your dog, or sorry, of your dog's collar, okay? It's going to have, it's going to have these little tabs on it, okay? This isn't it. This is a, a tab, but it's just good. good just gonna have, sorry, just gonna have these little metal or these nylon tabs with Velcro that wrap under, okay, and the Velcro and it attaches this on. So now looking at the collar from the top, it looks like a nylon collar, okay, because this is all gonna be attached. Now, uh, if you had a dog with a thin coat, again, a boxer or a Rottweiler or something like that, okay, then they're still gonna be able to see these underneath, just doesn't look as bad. But if your dog had longer fur, the fur is going to cover that and you're not going to even be able to notice it. All right. I had a client one time that called because there was a, a pet expo she wanted to take her dog to here. And, um, you know, the rules were you couldn't have your dog on a training collar. And I just thought that was kind of crazy and sad. And uh, again, just the most misunderstood training tool on the market. Okay. Um, and I promise you, you guys, if these were harmful to dogs, I would never, ever put one on my dog. That's why when I first came out of dog training school, I tried all the tools. I just wanted to see what was out there, what worked, um, maybe if I could find something better. And this was it. This was better. Okay. And this is what I needed when I had my German Shepherd. Uh, he was six months. I had him trained really good. Um, but when it started coming to dogs, he was kind of coming into his maturity. Um, he was a complete butthead and I couldn't get control. No matter how well trained I had him on the street, he was a wreck. So I went to the big gun and boom, got him dialed in. Okay. And then had absolute control over him for the rest of his life, which was amazing. Okay. So, um, there was a little period there where I was like, I kind of hate him, <laughs> but it wasn't him. It was just that I didn't have control. All right. And not food motivated when there's dogs around, things like that. Okay. So if you have a dog that's reactive or aggressive, uh, and they're not motivated when there's, um, you know, dogs around and they're freaking out, you're not going to be able to positively motivate them to not want to go after that dog. Okay. And there are some dogs like that. So we need something else. We need a way to stop them, to prevent them from being crazy all right, <laughs> and reacting. So this is where this training tool comes in. So 
Uh, if you have any questions on this, you guys, I'm going to end this video here, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. If you want to do maybe a little video chat with me to see that your dog's collar is fitted properly. If you're unsure, I'd be happy to do that with you. If you need a leash or safety coupler, please contact me. You will not be able to find these in stores or anywhere because this is something that I make. And uh, if you need the little quick release kit, okay, we can get these to you too. So I've got these um, in the silver. I have a like a kind of a gold and also we can get them in a brassy color or black. Um, so I've got some of these on hand uh, that we could get you hooked up with as well. All right, so this is the extra small. These are special orders. Mm, this is the small, okay. Extra small, oops, they're kind of tangled small. And then your medium, okay. You wouldn't need anything other than these three. Uh, I'm not going to lie, you guys, these are really hard to find in stores right now. I don't know if it's just the, the lack of uh, supplies, you know, since the world shut down. Um, but I do have some of the medium on hand. I'm getting more. Uh, they were out of small when I ordered them, but uh, hopefully I can get some more in stock right away. Um, but uh, check on online, check Amazon, maybe, you know, you'll be able to find them for sure. But if you need help, let me know. Again, make sure it's this Herm Springer version. Okay, don't get the other cheap version, all right? There is a difference, you guys. Um, and the medium is only gonna cost you about $30, and this one will cost you about 28. So not too bad, okay? 20 or 25, 28 bucks, something like that. So after tax anyways. All right, okay, you guys. So that's my deal on training collars and prong collars. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we will talk to you guys soon. Take care.